Hi, welcome back to Storytime with Gigi. Today we're reading another classic called Robinson Crusoe. Make sure that you like and subscribe. A long time ago, a merchant's wife gave birth to a beautiful baby boy named Robinson Crusoe. His father, a clever man, tried to convince his young son to study, but Robinson yearned to spend his life at sea. Before allowing Robinson to set sail, the merchant gave his son advice. The happiest man is the one who avoids both poverty and great riches during his life. Robinson promised to never forget the wise words of his father, no matter how far he might travel. Robinson first led, headed to London, where he came across a ship with a captain who promised every member of the crew a chance to earn his fortune. Robinson, forgetting the promise he made to his father, jumped aboard. Robinson enjoyed his first couple of days at sea, but as they neared the Caribbean, the ship sailed into a horrible storm. The boat unable to navigate through the immense waves and raging winds, was thrown onto the sandy coast of a tiny island. Robinson, along with the other crew members, rushed to the lifeboats. As they rowed, a massive wave crashed down, scattering Robinson and the crew into the water. Robinson swam for his life, rising and falling with the great waves until eventually he felt sand beneath his feet. The sea carried him to land. Safe on shore, Robinson lay down, panting. The ship and its crew were nowhere in sight. Robinson remembered his father's words, to avoid both poverty and great riches, and felt ashamed. He hadn't listened to this advice. He swore to himself then and there, that if he ever got off the island, he would go straight home to his family and continue his studies. I think I would be very scared. For now, Robinson shook the sand from his clothes and set off to explore the island. Down the beach, he stumbled upon the remains of the shipwrecked vessel. He found food and fresh water in the galley, as well as clothes and weapons. He also found Rex, the captain's loyal dog. The ship's deck was strewn with pieces of wood that had broken during the storm. Using the wood and ropes from the mast, Robinson made himself a raft big enough to carry all his treasures back to the bay. With his newfound supply secured, Robinson pushed the raft away from the pillaged shipwreck. Just then, he was splashed with water from behind. It was Rex. The dog jumped into the water and was swimming towards the raft. I guess I won't be alone on this island after all, Robinson said to Rex. Welcome aboard. Over the next few days, Robinson unloaded the goods onto the beach to take stock of his supplies. They had plenty of food and water, but still nowhere to sleep. Robinson dismantled the raft and dug the biggest logs into the sand. Then he went into the forest to chop down trees. The work was tiring. But Robinson knew it was important to have shelter from the island's unpredictable weather and animals. Before long, he built a small but sturdy cabin to sleep in. Exhausted, he fell asleep with Rex curled up beside him. That would be hard to do that all by yourself. Robinson and Rex lived well on the island for several years. All thanks to Robinson's resourceful nature. He tamed wild goats and used their milk to make cheese and butter. He found barley growing in the fields and cultivated it so he had enough food to last the winter. He also befriended a parrot that he named Paul and, to get, and taught it to speak. 
or pole. Then one day, Robinson was following Rex and Pole on the beach when he noticed something odd in the sand. It was a large footprint, a human footprint. Robinson froze, suddenly full of fear. He scanned his surroundings and listened intently for sounds of strangers in the distance. He was considering turning back to his cabin when he heard noises from further up the beach. Curious, he crept forward and peered over a large boulder. In the distance, Robinson saw a young boy surrounded by a group of warriors. We have to do something, Robinson said to Rex and Paul. Rex sprang towards the warriors, barking. Robinson followed, shooting once into the air. Startled by the loud noises, the warriors ran back to their boats, leaving the boy behind. Robinson brought the boy back to his cabin and fed him some bread and fruit. As the boy ate, Robinson decided his name should be Friday, the day their paths crossed. In no time at all, Friday became Robinson's loyal companion. Robinson taught Friday to speak English, how to care for the goats, and how to plant the barley seeds so they grew taller and stronger. After a few years living with Robinson, Friday spotted his homeland across the sea. My village, I see it, cried Friday. Seeing the sparkle in his eye, Robinson decided they would build a boat strong enough to sail them back to Friday's village. They selected a gigantic tree to chop down as the base of their boat. It would take many months of hard work to create the perfect shape. Then one morning, as Robinson sat on a hilltop scanning the sea for passing ships, he spotted both a ship and a rowboat in the distance. He realized that the rowboat was headed straight for his island. In the rowboat were sailors from the ship, but they didn't look like they wanted to simply explore the island. They had the captain tied up. They were mutineers who wanted to leave the captain on the island and take control of the ship. With help from Friday, Rex, and Paul, Robinson managed to release the captain and tie up the mutineers instead. The only problem, the captain told him, was that there were more mutineers on the ship and they had locked up all his loyal crew in the brig. Robinson and the captain made a deal. If Robinson and Friday recovered his ship from the mutineers, the captain would grant them free passage to England as a reward. So Robinson and Friday came up with a plan. To trick the mutineers, they had the captain break apart the rowboat and use the wood to make a fire on the beach. Then they rowed out to the ship. The plan worked. The beach fire distracted the mutineers, and in all the chaos, Robinson and Friday managed to sneak onto the ship unseen. With Robinson's rifle and Friday's spear, they quickly convinced the mutineers to surrender. After tying up the last mutineer on deck, Robinson and Friday hurried downstairs to release the ship's crew. The sailors were in shock. They couldn't believe that a castaway and a young boy had rescued them, but they were ecstatic to see their captain safe and sound. Thank you for recapturing my vessel, the captain cried, presenting Robinson with lavish gifts of wine, food, and clothing. 
Robinson remembered his father's wise words to avoid both poverty and great riches, graciously accepted the gifts after years surviving on the remote island. At that moment, he could think of nothing better than new clothes to wear, delicious food to fill his stomach, and free passage aboard the ship. As they set sail, Robinson, Friday, Rex, and Pole waved goodbye to the island before turning to face the vast sea ahead. Together, the friends were ready for their next adventure, a sea voyage to England. And that's our story. I hope you liked it. Make sure that you like and subscribe and share with your friends. Bye until next time.